hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to my sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support hope you all are doing great today we'll be talking something very important and it's about this becky karen who actually went to sephora with her kids i decided to compile the videos to, so you all can see how it all happened and uh let me start by saying that if a mother can watch her child like you know do something that you know that is not acceptable by community or by like you know everybody and you think you are in a public place and you do something like that and you think that it's cool you are such a very bad you are an irresponsible mother because there is no how a responsible mother will see her child Doing something like this and she is comfortable and laughing why there are so many black people all around walking around and now I keep saying this sometimes you play some stupid games and you win some stupid prizes they are actually looking for her in uh, where she is I think I don't I think where this is happening in Boston or something and people are looking for her now see if they are able to locate her find the child trust me this is going to probably affect her job except she, like it's going to affect her job that is number one and then the child might face so many things like you know as she grows or like straight up from now because her face is all over the internet people are saying the horrible things her mother and her did i mean this would have been a great time for her mother to educate her daughter about some certain things but no she failed woefully let's get into this video this is why sephora needs to be for adults only because why were these teenagers caught doing blackface this is so wild. This is so shameful. This is so shameful. Like, <laughs> reading the caption here, genuinely so disgusted and disturbed. My teammates and I arrived in Boston for a track meet this weekend and walked around Sephora before dinner to kill time. These group of teenage girls and their mothers come in and go to the makeup section to use the samples for blackface whilst giggling and making animal sounds. The hell? The Sephora worker, lady in black, confronted them and the mother dismisses her and walks off. After I stopped filming, both mothers came to press me to delete the video of the blatant racism because they didn't consent. This behavior is disgusting and unacceptable. I'm glad that my good sis recorded this. She will be tagged down below. And it is a damn shame that the Sephora employee tried her best to consult the mother about her daughter. However, the lady was not trying to hear it. The fact that the mom nonchalantly walked off tells me that this hateful behavior was learned and that the mother has no desire to correct it. The video has already gone viral and it's only a matter of time before people figure out who the parents and teens are. And I do believe that they will be facing consequences for their actions because the internet does not forget and we certainly don't play. Like, this lady has no shame. Like, literally. This is so wild. This is so shameful. This is so shameful. Like, <laughs> this was in Sephora at the Prudence Center in Boston, Massachusetts. These three teenage girls were black facing in public and going around the store making monkey noises. Every time I do one of these videos calling out somebody doing blackface, I always have people from outside the country who do not understand the depth as to why blackface is so harmful. So I tried to explain. That is extremely racist in this country. I'd recommend reading up on minstrel shows. It's a very shameful thing this country did. Degrade and dehumanize black people. As you know, I do not identify children, but the mom who is encouraging all of this, I wanna know who she is. Quick shout out to this woman here for standing up for what is right. She's a real one. Cause even when the mom tried to play it off and make an excuse, she called her out and said, no, you were trying to take a photo of it. You were absolutely encouraging it. Good on you. By the way, she does not work at Sephora. She's one of those you know, vendors there selling other products. So you don't need to thank Sephora for that. Because I'll be honest, I played a lot of video games when I was younger. So whenever I see Sephora, all I think is. Boston, Massachusetts. Help me locate the name of this woman. So these three teenage girls and their mother went to Sephora. And I guess for some reason, the teenage girls were like, let's do blackface. And I think the mom thought it was a good idea too, considering she seemed not to be interested in what the girls were doing. But the teenage girls used the darker shades and samples available to them. And they did blackface and walked around Sephora with black people there. 
and one of these black people is a content creator that ended up making a video of them and in the video there's a woman who doesn't necessarily work for sephora but works for a brand that sephora works with and she's like dude like why would you do that this will ruin your chances with schools your future da 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 and the mom is just like walking away and she doesn't care but it's really to the girls you've done it now okay you went to sephora you did black face black people saw you they got offended and now your faces are all over social media what's the next move because truly i want to know what went through your mind that you were like let me walk into this makeup store in 2024 in a mall that's probably crowded with black people and let me do blackface like wouldn't it have just been better if you guys just did blackface in private if you guys just stayed racist in private because i don't doubt that you and your mom is racist and so are your friends but like if you did it in private you would have been fine nobody would have known like why'd you have to go to sephora to do it you could have done it at home I think it would have been just easier for you to be an awful racist person behind closed doors. And I think if you're one of these people, you should take privacy really seriously. This is why Sephora needs to be for adults only, because why were these teenagers caught doing blackface? So this video has come up in different forms in my For You page over the last like day or two. And so I'm going to talk about it real quick. I have some thoughts. And in case you're wondering, this is just a microphone. It's not an AI pin, it's a microphone. All right, so whenever I see stuff like this, my first thought is that I am a little shocked, not because I'm naive about the existence of racism, that's like far from the case, but because it is genuinely shocking to me to see young people, right, like younger than 20, engaged in just gutter racism, right? The kind of racism that wouldn't be out of place uh, in the 1920s, right? The kind of thing you'd see at the little short before you saw your feature at your local theater. Like, really intense stuff. And what those teenagers are accused of, right? Um, uh, putting on blackface, making animal noise, that's, that's like some pretty gutter racism. So it's, it's shocking to me in that regard. And my first thought after that is to ask, where could they have possibly learned this? Like, where does this come from? Because presumably they exist in the same society we all do, which is a racist society, but also one where there's a real taboo on public displays of racism. And the idea that you would go in public, no less, and do this sort of thing seems to really cut against what, the way most people are socialized these days. You can say, well, they learned it from their parents, but their parents are also not that old. We're not talking about 60, 70, 80 year olds. We're talking about like 30, 40, maybe at the oldest 50 years. Um, uh, and so it's possible that they learned it from their parents, but it's still, I still find it very strange. But then I think about two books. The first is The Wages of Whiteness, Race, and the Making of the American Working Class by David R. Rediger. You read chapters in the book that are a bit specifically on blackface and, and white racial formation among the white racial white uh, working class in the 19th century, you got to remember, white is a socially constructed category, and white Americans, especially like new white immigrants, had to first think of themselves and construct themselves as white, as this racial category. Um, and so Rediger is sort of trying to unpack what, what that looked like, and he zeroes in on blackface as one of the key cultural things that help build a sense of whiteness as distinct from blackness in the antebellum north and so there's one um there's one in chapter five titled class coons crowd class coons and crowds in antebellum america it's one paragraph on a free rule blackface served not only to identify the white crowd with the excellence of black popular culture but also to connect its wearers with the pre-industrial permissiveness of to african americans it re-emphasized that the christmas night or the militia day was a time of celebration and license of looseness drinking and promiscuity but even in the midst of revelry and even given the real desires of the crowds to, quote, act black, the celebrants needed to underscore continually that the point, the point was that they were still white. The chimney sweeps were part of the crowds. That chimney sweeps were part of the crowds. It's a curious twist to this drama. And that sweeps faced the daily problem that their occupation and the involuntary blacking up it entailed might lead to their being identified with black. So this helps unpack a little why when we see these instances of blackface among young people, it's very specifically not in private, right? It's in public scenes, it's in at the Halloween parties, the Sephora, a place where people hang out apparently, I don't know. Um, 
uh, the blackness and the fact that they were act they were making animal noises, acting silly. It's both racist, but also blackness sort of signifies a kind of like looseness, right? You can behave in, in animalistic ways in public as long as you're under the cover of blackness in some way, shape, or form. And so that's, this is already, of course, identifying one, one of the ways he's identifying is operating in the 19th century, which may still have purchased in the 20th century. But then this, you know, the raises brings um, uh, another question. Right, which is well, how how does this even how is this even so culturally transmitted? We're 160, 170 years away from say the 1840s. How how does this remain in circulation in American popular culture? Well, this leads me to another book, and I don't have my physical copy here. I gave it to my parents while back so they could read. It. But it's Sundown Towns: A Hidden Dimension of American Racism by the late James W. Lowen. You might know him from the book Lies My Teacher Told Lies My Teacher Told Me, a fine book. But this this I think is like his masterpiece. And it is an examination of the phenomenon of the sun sundown town. And there's a there's a chapter and I just skimmed through it again and he doesn't have like a single, you know, sound bite I can rip out so I can kinda of summarize it for you. And there's a chapter where he notes that one of the effects of sundown towns, aside from you know, being racist and terrible and uh, hard on black people who are in them or anyone of a different race or, or background who's in them, uh, sundown towns also do something peculiar. And it's not just sundown towns. Racially exclusive places, places built around the exclusion of others, do a curious thing to those within them. And that is they inculcate uh, racist attitudes. Ra a racist structure like a sundown town it basically inculcates in its residents the ideology necessary to defend and justify and perpetuate it. Uh, uh, and so what he finds is that um, incidences of explicit racism, of um, a wide belief in racial stereotypes, of racial prejudice, these things are much more common in sundown towns and other racially exclusive places. Now this is, I'm using racially exclusive because this isn't simply segregation, right? This is a place that's kept racially exclusive. I mean, this is segregation, but it's not like the involuntary segregation. It is... Um, uh, a voluntary choice to exclude by, by the white residents to exclude others and this inculcates and that means kind of cultivates develops in the mind um, uh, creates habits of mind you might say uh, that that lend themselves towards racist beliefs and ideologies and the like so we've established that blackface serves as like a psychological purpose it, it does something for the person engaging in blackface and we've established that there are conditions, social conditions, under which racist ideologies are perpetuated in people's brains. Being in exclusive, uh, all-white uh, kinds of places may inculcate racist ideologies. Now, I don't know anything about these teens or their parents, but if they're you know, affluent Americans, like many, many affluent Americans, they likely live, they like their parents for who grew up and they're currently living now, in a kind of racially exclusive place. Maybe there's no, there's no longer any racial covenants, there's no you know, legal segregation, of course, but uh, neighborhood segregation is still incredibly intense in the United States. Most white Americans, even those who live in relatively diverse areas, live in places that are largely, if not exclusively white. And then when you add to this, um, sort of the latent racism in American culture, the latent uh, anti-black prejudice that remains um, throughout American culture, uh, it actually it, it begins to make sense how in this, in this case and other cases, young people are absorbing and then reflecting, kind of like as I described, gutter racism. It's not just in the air. It's also likely inculcated by their social uh, uh, milieu and the performance of racism, whether it's blackface, whether it's you know having a, a Nazi avatar on a social media site, whatever, the performance of racism is uh, psychologically satisfying, right? It allows people to indulge parts of themselves that they otherwise keep out of public. So this is my explanation for the Sephora incident. I think it makes sense. Uh, uh, and, and I think that if I have any great lessons to take away from this is that um, it's important to, of course, look at you know, people's attitudes, but it's also very useful to look at how the social situation actually shapes how people understand themselves and express themselves. Like, this lady has no
So first things first, yes, this is a new wig. Yes, I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to see how I like it. And if you say anything about me looking like either the guy from Charlie the Chocolate Factory or Dora the Explorer, best believe that will be my 13th reason. And I will put your name in my note. Play with me. Now, if somebody had walked into that Sephora and saw your daughter in blackface, asked no questions and simply swung off on your daughter, that'd be on you. You taking pictures for laughs and giggles, but really you put your daughter at risk. Instead of you saying, go wash your face. We don't do that. You laughed and you wanted to take pictures and you encouraged it. Now, when she go off to school and her friends recognize her or you and start spreading that video around of her in blackface and she's being bullied and harassed, I don't want you to come to social media crying about it. No ma'am, no ham, no turkey. When she's not able to go off to college because people constantly bring this video up, I want you to remember that you thought it was funny. It's the simple fact is that you allowed your daughter to walk around like that in public and thought people weren't going to say nothing to you. Kudos to that lady, okay? Kudos to her because she told you it's unacceptable. And when you try to say, oh, like, you know, I didn't know. She was like, no, ma'am, you took pictures of it. You thought it was funny. That's standing on business. That's standing on business, people. That right there, okay? She was like, I'm not here for the bullshit. Your child's in blackface. You got her walking around here. You are offending people by doing this. And you thought it was funny. Now, one thing I've learned in life is that when people are doing wrong and they get checked, especially by their own they love to make excuses and i love that this lady peeped that and was like no you thought it was acceptable you were laughing you were trying to take pictures i wish parents taught their kids that it is not okay to be black fishing or black facing you're in sephora you literally could go to a makeup expert and ask them to do a foundation match to your skin. You don't need to try a color or foundation that is far away from your skin complexion. It makes no type of sense. And I also see that her mom is right beside her and she's not saying anything to her because she thinks that that's okay and it's not. You're the adult here. You have to educate your teenagers on what's right and what's wrong. And right now, she's doing something wrong and you need to tell her that. I've seen this situation numerous of time and I think it's time for people to educate themselves on black facing and the history behind it because it is extremely disrespectful to do that, especially when you're in front of a bunch of black people in Sephora. So I hope this young lady educate herself and I hope the mom does better when it comes to raising her child because this is not okay at all. Let's remember who were the ones that brought the plate because Europeans were not very clean people. That's all I'm gonna say. So a lot of eugenics get passed down and I'm not saying it's every person out there because I'm, I'm most definitely sure that it isn't, but there's a demographic that are dirty as hell and i just know it dirty musty disgusting you know why because the other day i was a big lots and i was buying something and there was this white man i don't know if he had just gotten off a bender i don't know what happened but not like this pungent like disgusting ass smell it was crazy so i'm not surprised i'm not surprised i'm not surprised it's just dirty dirty and not only dirty but you're also an idiot like crazy you pick a struggle it's either you're dirty or you're an idiot you can't be a dirty idiot and a racist too crazy these sephora girls have made many people mad for painting their faces black and then doing monkey noise i mean like during black history month is absolutely crazy but like in general this is just a fucking mess like we live rent free in their fucking minds. Like, why, what what possessed you to do that? Hmm. Again, I say during Black History Month is crazy, but like to do it at all, and then I'm just gonna walk away like ain't nothing happened, baby.
get your child. And I'll say this once and I ain't, I ain't never gonna say it again. Probably not, who knows? Hold on. Racism is taught. You don't just grow up and be, you, you just choose to be racist one day. It's taught from when you was a child. Those, your parents and your family put that on you. Like baby. I don't give a who, I don't give a who, who you are. I'll judge you on your person and how you treat me. Okay? Don't fuck with me because you just did that for no fucking. Yeah. No, I walked over here and you're about to like, say that. This lady has no shame. Like, literally. This is so wild. This is so shameful. This is so shameful. Like, <laughs> this was in Sephora at the Prudence Center in Boston, Massachusetts. These three teenage girls were black facing in public and going around the store making monkey noises. Every time I do one of these videos calling out somebody doing blackface, I always have people from outside the country who do not understand the depth as to why blackface is so harmful. So I tried to explain that is extremely racist in this country. I'd recommend reading up on minstrel shows. It's a very shameful thing this country did to degrade and dehumanize black people. As you know, I do not identify children, but the mom who is encouraging all of this, I want to know who she is. Quick shout out to this woman here for standing up for what is right. She's a real one. Because even when the mom tried to play it off and make an excuse, she called her out and said, no, you were trying to take a photo of it. You were absolutely encouraging it. Good on you. By the way, she does not work at Sephora. She's one of those you know, vendors there selling other products. So you don't need to thank Sephora for that. Plus, I'll be honest, I played a lot of video games when I was younger, so whenever I see Sephora, all I think is... Boston, Massachusetts. Help me locate the name of this woman. ...with darker shade foundation. Count your days. Because I promise, your day of reckoning is coming. And this is not a threat. It's just that everything that goes around comes around. You might think it's fun and games now, but when you're trying to get into college and they're not accepting you, or you're trying to get a job and they're not accepting you because they saw your face doing blackface a couple of years back, don't cry, don't beg. I saw a lot of people like trying to hold the, the mother accountable, like, oh, um, why didn't the mother stop them or something like that. I honestly, within my heart of hearts, believe she condoned, condoned that behavior because let's be honest, if she was in the store with them, for them to proceed to paint their whole entire faces black she definitely saw it and was okay with it so and she de that's definitely learned behavior racism is taught it's not something that people just pick up it's taught i think is the insensitive insensitivity like you guys did this in public in a public place so with in a place that black people would probably be because hello it's a freaking mall and then what was your game plan? After you did that, what what what, what was gonna happen? Were you guys gonna walk through the mall with that on your face? Like, I feel like the critical thinking is in the dustbin because why? I don't know what it is about this particular Black History Month, but the tomfoolery is at an all time high. Y'all need to get it together. Cause I'm, mm. yeah. Ooh, I walked over here and you're about to like, this has no I strongly believe that people do not have any social class or social etiquette etiquette because yesterday um unrelated to the video but it's something similar i was in target and this lady was opening the true hot body body butters and she was swatching it like she was dipping her hands in it and rubbing it on her skin and i was literally there like that is so disgusting because you know we don't know if our hands are clean cause contamination germs all of that and i don't know how many other people you know but i've opened the body bottle and i personally never thought about it like that after seeing her i was just like so taken aback and disgusted that now like i don't want to to buy anything from target because you know like these people have no social etiquette i was a grown-ass woman and these are teenagers like this is society we live in these people have no social etiquette whatsoever Hongor Sujia is making like facts, so go rewatch that video. But I just want to comment. The girl with the blonde hair is confronting this woman, this mother of this child who's doing blackface, saying, hey, that's not cool. You were about to take a photo of her while she's doing blackface because you thought it was funny. And what's messed up is that the mom just walks away and leaves her child to like literally fend for herself. And even the daughter is like, what? 
do I do here? My mom just walked away. What do I do? Not only are you teaching your kid it's okay to do blackface, you're teaching her it's okay to walk away from confrontation instead of taking a p accountability. Even Black History Month can't save anyone from white people being the fucking worst. What a terrible fucking mother. And of course, it's in Boston. Deport racist! Deport him! We're done. This is all I got from this video. I think I dropped a clip like that uh, where Sister Tabita like spoke about it, but it was not like, you know, I mean, it was not elaborate. So I decided to go around and get more videos to back it up. And looking at this, this, I mean, I am sorry, she was not trying to tan. When you see people trying to tan, you can actually do a little bit of uh, like, you know, a darker shade on your face and you can tan your skin. But what she did wasn't tanning. She was actually doing blackface. Because do you know how many foundations she put on her face? How many foundations she already put on her face to achieve, to get that, all that on her face? It's a lot. I don't like makeup foundation on my face, right? But for her to put like, you know, for you to achieve this, you must get a lot of foundation to achieve what she did. So it wasn't her just trying to tan and watching her mother right there, you know, taking pictures and watching her children. I think there were two or something doing that. And she was taking pictures, not until they, the uh, white lady came out, I mean, the attendant came out to uh, tell them that this is not acceptable, that it, what they are doing is wrong. And they were giggling, right? The mother, when she, she told her that this might actually cost you your job or something, she started sneaking away. And uh, I hope internet finds her, not just finding her. Look at her office so that the world can see what she was trying to do. And number one thing, I just found out that like black people really cannot be like, you know, there is no how you all are getting any time off from them because they are all on you. Like, you know, they are patching all over, even they are on your nose. And this really sucks. Like, you know, when we talk about racism and how it is being taught and all of that, some people think we are joking. But seeing a mother, she is really an irresponsible mother. And, uh, you know, I cannot. I mean, something like this, you know, how you set yourself up for dragging or set your kids up for dragging. Because I cannot watch my daughter. Like, you know, I went to say for her as as like you know how i do not i would not like even my child that is has not even grown to have like you know a lot of foundation on her face let a lot like if only you know the amount of foundation she put on her face trying to achieve this and she wait for the most like you know the darkest of them all and then she they knew what they are doing because you wouldn't nobody would tell me that she was probably trying to test the foundation to see if they were her color once you put on a foundation like this on your face, you definitely would know if it is your color or not, right? It is not something I think parents can do better, especially those racist parents. I see how you all are teaching your kids how to be you because like, you know, how are you going to live this world without somebody representing you? Because this is more like it, you know, they are trying to raise other people that will represent them when there are no more. What are they representing? Representing bad, horrible things. Because like, you know, there are some things you see, you start asking yourself, like, what is this woman teaching her children? Like, you know, I probably feel like she wouldn't, like she wouldn't have any great impact on their on her children because i mean being in the public and watching your daughter do this and you were taking pictures and they were trying to tell you this is not right and you guys were giggling so they already knew what they were doing 
and it really sucks that black people really have to go through all of this every day, like you know. And the people are knowing that there were so many black people there, right? And also the content creators, like they were trying to pass away time before going for where they were going, like you know, took videos and all they were they were telling them this is not right, and they were <laughs> giggling, right? See you all in my next video. Bye for now.